it really is a wonderful event for kids to express themselves in ways that are outside of just being in class. So it's an exciting time in Dayton Public Schools, watching our young people really tell stories about politics, about how they feel, about the world, uh, all types of sides of them that we don't normally see during the school day. To be honest, I was blown away. It's beautiful coming to my city and seeing the young talent, you know what I mean? It takes a lot to get on stage and to, you know, go stand in front of a lot of people. And I know some people rehearsed it and some of them was like reading it live, but you know, it's different when you're in front of people and um, they did their thing. So I was excited to be a part of it. Something that I really liked was that every student's piece, it had some level of impact. It meant something. A lot of it was a personal story. They all left a piece of them mm -hmm. on that stage. And for me, that was big for them being students, their youth out here expressing themselves. That just made me happy. We need to use dialogue within our communities, states, and nation to achieve the dream of so many people in the world. A dream of peace and justice that has been put off for too long. A dream that we must keep fighting for together. We are gathered here tonight to commemorate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So great of a champion he was to our people and a true king amongst men. But I challenge each of you to take a long, hard look at yourselves and reflect and ask yourselves, would he be proud of where we are today? Anybody who can write and, and wants to write or wants to be able to express themselves, they should come here. There's no reason if you have the opportunity for you not to try. And after you try, you're gonna get better. Yeah, so never right. be afraid to start and try. That's right. At Dayton Public Schools, we come together to celebrate the spirits of sportsmanship and community. However, poor behavior by fans and sometimes athletes have created challenges that impact the safety and enjoyment of these gatherings. We believe in creating a positive and inclusive environment for everyone, students, families, and fans alike. Our collective responsibility is to ensure that our athletic events remain safe, enjoyable, and supportive. To achieve this, we have a few reminders. Respect, respect the, the game. game. Make sure you show respect for the athletes, coaches, and officials. Remember that these events are about skill, teamwork, and friendly competition. Do not walk on the court or field and remain in the stands and on the sidelines. Show, show support, support in a positive way. Celebrate good plays and efforts by the team you're there to support. Avoid negative chants, cheers, or comments that may create a hostile environment. Set, Set a, a positive, positive example. example. Adults should lead by example for students. Remember that children are watching, learning, and absorbing your reaction. Students should lead by example for their peers and for those who look up to them. Remember that your behavior influences those around you. Let's come together to support our students in the right way. Positive energy enhances the entire experience and creates lasting memories for our young athletes. Join us in fostering an environment where everyone feels welcome, safe, and inspired. Together, let's make our athletic events a source of pride for our entire community. We are VPS. So when you first walk in this particular building, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see bright, open spaces, clean floors, when they say it's a new age here within this building, it truly is. The culture here at E.J. Brown is about keeping it consistent, about keeping it simple, keeping it about students. How do we get students from where they are now to where we need them to be? So about being in those hallways, building those relationships, those positive relationships with students, knowing their names, and just building that bond, believing in them. Keep it simple, keep it consistent, keep it all about students. That's why we're here at EJ Brown. This year, we have a very strong administration team, and we have very clear expectations, not only for the students, but also for the teachers. So that consistency is really strong this year, and I see that growing as we keep moving forward. I love challenging the students. So I teach science, and for me, it's more about teaching them to think more than like the content. So really getting them to understand what's happening around them and then be able to use that in situations that they might get into outside of the school. We've been changing the expectations and honing more into academics around the students. And then we've also been bringing in more community pieces. Um, we've had some change over the years, but the last couple years they've stayed the same and we're growing more community base. As a security resource officer here, my main job is student safety. I also 
am somewhat of a counselor or a mediator to the students. A lot of them come and talk to me and we try to figure out solutions together to make things better because if, if things outside of school are affecting you, then you're not gonna be able to uh, get a proper education. I believe that building a relationship with these students is the key to them advancing educationally as well as socially. E.J. Brown is the best middle school because we have the best sports teams, we have the best teachers, we have the best SRO team in the district, we have the best principal in the district. So if you want to be the best, you should come to E.J. Brown. I think students should go here because it gives them a better mindset. The biggest difference between elementary and middle school is the moving around, but it really wasn't that hard to get used to. The way to be a Bruin is to follow the Bruin bees. Be respectful, be responsible, be safe, and be unstoppable. If anybody is watching this, you can tell we have some amazingly dynamic, smart, wonderful kids in Dayton Public Schools. Tell me why you're in Dayton Public Schools. Um, I like going to E.J. Brown because of the staff. I, I love like the that. staff. Yeah, you got a new principal. He is mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. He walks around a lot, checks mm -hmm. on you guys. I like him. I want to be a robotics engineer. I want to take that to college and do great things with it. How'd you come up with that? I'm in a pathway called advanced manufacturing, and I'm taking it currently. So your exposure or your experience in advanced manufacturing got you start thinking about, hey, this is the field I want to go into. Yes, sir. Yes. Awesome. I like going to Belmont because I like the people, and I like the teachers, and I like the uh, staff, and especially I like the principal, Miss McDowell. I want to go to Dayton Public Schools because I feel like Every single teacher in Dayton Public Schools are really appreciated of the students that they have and show a lot of love to them. Mm -hmm. What I like most about the district is all of the opportunities that they have, such as DPS University where you can earn college credits while you're still in high school. The staff is really welcoming and they're always pushing you to do your best in whatever you do. I'm looking forward to getting some of my college credits already out of the way before I go to college. I have a lot of favorite staff members, but the one who I would say influences me the most is most likely Miss Mo, because she just stays on top of everyone and she makes sure that you're doing well and having a good day and stuff like that. I'm thinking of studying law and becoming a lawyer because I don't really like the laws we have now, so I'd like to maybe change them. I like it, so you want to be an advocate? Yes. DeAndre? I've thought about being a realtor. I always wanted to, uh... What? Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you, I've never heard a kid say that. I wanted to get rid of the, the whole bunch of empty, vacant houses around my neighborhood, feel me? It just seemed like a good thing to do because it just make the neighborhood look bad, even though it's good people around there. It just make my neighborhood look bad. The whole staff and administration helped me get through my sophomore year all the way to my senior year. King, I appreciate you sharing that space where you said that you had some adversity, yeah. you know, and that this hasn't always been an easy road, and there was a whole family that wrapped their arms around you. I want you to know how much we in Dayton Public Schools are uh, proud of you, and, uh, first of all, and how much, we, uh, how, how much we wish you the best in the future, and we hope that you stay in touch with us so we're able to talk about what a graduate looks like as they move out into the world and, and, and do things other than high school. Project Life is a transition program for students that have special needs and are on IEPs. It's uh, post-secondary, so once they meet all their graduation requirements, their um, IEP team can decide that they would like to have them continue to receive services, and they can stay with us until their 22nd birthday. We teach them employability skills, how to get a job, how to keep a job, how to um, interact with people, interact with supervisors. Um, how to be aware of what accommodations you need to be successful at the job. Um, then we give them a chance to practice that, going out in the community and working. 
and so our students build those skills so once they leave they can be successful and as independent as they can be going forward. So right now we're partnered with um, Boone Shop Museum. We go there weekly. Uh, the students clean the display cases. They clean high touch points. Uh, we partner with Woodman Bowl. This is our second year partnered with Woodman Bowl. We go there every Thursday. The kids vacuum. They clean and sanitize bowling balls. Uh, they organize all the shoes. In the warmer months, we go to the Learning Tree Farm. It's also our second year for that, and the kids get to do farm work or we garden. Uh, we also have a standing partnership with Innovative Plastic and the outside business partnerships is really what makes this program great because it gives the kids an opportunity to put the skills we talk about into practice. Currently it's open to any Dayton Public School student that has an IEP and has met all the graduation requirements and it's simply a decision that their team makes um, at their senior IEP meeting that they want them to um, do what's called defer their diploma and continue to receive services. Everyone can do anything that you put your mind to. Sometimes you may have to do a little bit differently, you might have to figure out something that makes it work for you, but um, everyone is capable. And don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not. Hi, my name is Penny Bain. I'm a grandmother of two children that attends Ruskin Elementary School. I love things down here at Ruskin because I just feel like it's a loving, caring school. Uh, they offer so much. It's the love that they get. It takes a village to raise a child, and this is a village. Uh, there's a custodian here, Mr. Body. He gives them like fist bumps, and he makes sure he gives every child one before they enter the school. And then if they're tardy, they go and then they see Miss Love and she's always given bear hugs and loves and said, and I, you know, get on school on time. But my experience with one that I had um, is my uh, little granddaughter had separation anxiety and um, the school helped her tremendously get over that, you know, and, and like uh, let her know that she is safe. She is, you know, they got a safe place for her, but it's, it's wonderful, like the staff and they just do so much. My name is Marisha Collins, and I am a kindergarten teacher here at Kemp Elementary School. I'm a product of Dane Public Schools, a proud graduate of Dunbar High School. I had amazing teachers that impacted my life tremendously, so much so that I knew when I graduated, I wanted to pursue a career in education. My teachers went, um, went above and beyond their expectations, and I knew I wanted to be that kind of educator. I wanted to make a difference in the lives of children as well as their families. A teacher is, um, to me, a position that you are called to be in. It is not something that everyone can be. I chose DPS because I had fantastic role models that showed me just what a teacher should be and how teachers, um, you know, should interact with students and parents. I feel um, children um, need teachers who um, care for them and um, who have a passion for teaching. And I do believe that my passion is, is there. I can't see me doing anything else. And um, that's, that's why I chose DPS. Welcome. Welcome. So nice to have you here. All right, let's get. Are we good? 
Uh uh, you know, she at the polls. She at the polls. I have a problem if she was here. Yeah. I'll be like, man, you ain't supposed to be here right now. All right, let's let good one get in. I'll get good one 30 seconds. Man, listen. I was counting numbers like, hold on. <laughs> Something ain't right right now. <laughs> hey, people got to speak their peace. I let them park where they're going with. Yeah. I ain't going to fuss about it. Everybody got board docs loaded? Good evening, good evening. I'd like to call this March 19th, 2024 business meeting to order. Madam Treasurer, may we have a roll call? President Smith. I'm here. Ms. Wick. Present. Dr. Goodwin. Dr. Goodwin will be joining us shortly. Dr. Bailey. Here. Mr. Lacey. Here. Mr. Walker. Present. Ms. Reiner. Ms. Reiner won't be with us this evening. Mr. Nicholas. Here. Five present. Thank you. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? So we have a couple of special presentations, and I will say that these are my favorite, favorite, favorite presentations when we get to lift up our students. I say it all the time. That's what we're all here for. That'll be our guiding principle is understanding that we're here for the people that are here tonight, our students. So um, Ms. Miner's up here in place of Dr. Lawrence today. So Ms. Miner, would you want to? kick it off and tell us who's going to be doing the special presentations this evening. Yes. Thank you, President. Sm Thank you, President Smith. Thank you. Uh, and it is our pleasure. We are so excited tonight. We have our science fair winners and Miss Bonnie Porter will come forth and help us congratulate them. And once we finish that celebration will have our oratorical contest winners for the Martin Luther King Dayton Speaks oratorical contest. So we are very excited. And Dr. Kathy Borneman will come and lead us through that celebration. So I'd like to invite all of the board members down so that we can congratulate our winners. Thank you, board members. Could you join me down front, please?
Oh, that's better. Okay. Good evening, board, <laughs> board President Smith, Vice President Wick, board members, Associate Superintendent Ms. Lisa Minor, and Treasurer Abraha. We held our annual Dayton Public School Science, Technology, and Invention Fair on February the 3rd. We are proud to announce that over 300 students participated in our event. Thank you to the building administrators, teachers, science fair coordinators, parents, Chief Sheehy and the curriculum team, and especially our students for making this year's fair a huge success. At this time, we are honored to present to you the classes and students with exemplary projects that placed in first, second, and third in competition. Class projects, starting with preschool. So from uh, Bell Haven, we have Miss Steiger, Up, Up, and Away. We have, we have, we also have third place. That's, oh, and the student is coming up for Ms. Steiger, who's not here today. Ms. Ms. Lee is not here today. So from Rosa Parks, we have Jordan Shields accepting um, the award for Ms. Ms. Abstin. Okay. We have third place winner from Bellhaven, Ms. Coleman's class. Rain cloud in a jar. For Divisions 1, Kindergarten and First Grade, Class Projects. The third place winner was from Bell Haven, Ms. Saunders. Her project was Quick Ways Upstairs. The, the second place winner was from Edison, Ms. Butler. Project title, Cookie Dunk. And our, our first place winner was from Edison, Ms. Backer's class. Project was No So Yummy Gummy Bears. Division two, second and third grade classes. Um, the class project's third place was Charity Adams, Ms. Thorn Thornbird's class, Disappearing Candy Canes. Second place was Kemp, Ms. Ferry, and Ms. Ringo. Class project was called Crystals. And first place was Rivers Edge Montessori's, Ms. Ma Ms. Malua's class. 
all about Alka-Seltzer. The team projects for Division II, first place went to River's Edge, Ivan Craig, Tobias Flemings, and Samuel Hayes. The project was entitled, what, Why Does Fruit Turn Brown? <laughs> Division Three: the individual projects. Third place was from Valerie, Jordan Turner, what snacks has the most sugar? Second place was from Valerie, Aaron Dudley, which paper towel absorbs the most water? And first place was from Roosevelt, Peyton Long, all about Alka-Seltzer. All right, Division Three, fourth grade. Team project winners were from River's Edge, Josie LeBeau, Dora Kleinboat, and Selena Rosen Valerkis. And the title of their projects was Filter Wars. Second place went to River's Edge, Colin Stone, Andre Ross, and Kylan Tolliver, Balloon Powered Car. First place was Charity Adams, Tina Bass, and Brielle Scales. Which glue is the strongest? Okay, Division Four is going to be fifth and sixth grade. The team winners, there was a third place from Horace Mance, Jackson Davis, and you're ready, Asamari. And the title of their project was Football Throwing. <laughs> Second place was Roosevelt.
team winners for Division IV, first place winners were from Eastmont. Jeremy Galvis Rivas, Ellis Hubel, and Corbin Brown. The title of their project was Rising Water Experiment. The individual winner, <laughs> indiv individual winner, third place from Edison, Olu Watamiwa Bibalari. And the title of his project was The Paper Pilot. I practiced on that name for two days. <laughs> Okay, Division Four second place winner from Hearts Mance, Maria Sanchez. The title of her project was Soda Experiment. Division five, seventh and eighth grade. Team winners, third place was Charity Adams, Isabella Larkins, Tawana, uh, Tawniqua Stevens, and Michaela Terrell. And the title of the project was Test on the Human Ear.
Inventions, third place, Louise Troy, Kiera Hobson, and Samaya Crawford, homemade soup. Homemade soap. <laughs> Homemade soap. <laughs> Second place winner for inventions from Fairview. Charlie Morrison, Rufus Hicks, and Josiah House building a magnetic car. Our first place winner for uh, inventions was from Thurgood Marshall, Tatiana Wilbert. It was called Water Hydraulics, but I'm not sure if she's here. I think not. She's not here. Okay. Congratulations to all of our 2024 Science Fair winners. Division five, second place, Cooper Lake. From Cleveland Elementary School.
this is Division 5. Okay. Okay, and we have the first place winner from Division 5 here from Charity Adams. It was a group project, but Marzella Tremell is accepting that project. For, for Marzella, September Daniels, and Mal Malia Brown. And the title of their project was, Does Washing Your Hands with Hand Sanitizer Versus Hand Soap and Water Make Your, make your Hands Feel? Now, congratulations to all the 2024 winners. Okay, next what we want to do is congratulate our Dayton Speaks MLK Oratorical and Poetry Slam Contest win winners. The theme this year was the dream deferred, where do we go from here? As many of you know, the competition started off in the buildings at the school level. Then each student there had to perform his or her speech or poem in front of their schools. And then the uh, first place winner went on to the district level competition. So tonight we have here We'll start with the poetry contest, Martin Luther King Jr. Division. The winner was first place winner is from Belmont High School, Belmont Middle School, Marlo Richardson. Um, due to parent conferences and some other sporting events, the rest of our students could not be here, but I just wanted to go through and recognize their names. Um, and there is a coach here that is going to collect uh, the certificate. So the MLK Junior Division, the winner was uh, Perry Richer from Stivers, Julen's, Julen Sanchez, Wright Brothers Middle School, uh, Seth Trent is the Senior Division from Stivers, Nevea Woods was the Senior Division from Ponents winner, Naomi Fazili was the senior division from Dunbar. Those were for MLK. Um, for the poetry contest, the junior division winner was Vincent Shipman from Stivers, uh, Kyron McCoy from Wagaman, Harmony Livelle from Wright Brothers. In the senior division, the winner was Sana Averett from Stivers. And to pick up the winner from Thurgood Marshall, and I believe she was also a science winner, was Tatiana Wilbur. Um, if Tawana Forward would come up and get her certificate, we'd appreciate that. Maybe 
And then finally, Neviah Woods was his poetry senior division from Ponens. Thank you to the administration, coaches, parents, families, and students for making this year's Dayton Speaks event a success. Thank you. Once again, I want to say thank you for the parents and guardians that brought these children out this evening. I want to say congratulations to our students and a huge thank you to all the teachers, staff, principals that came out to support and those that support our children every day. Really appreciate it. Just want to give one final round of applause for everybody that came out today. All right, as we move on in our agenda are there any bargaining units any bargaining units that will wish to address the board this evening are you gonna pause for those yeah. people walking in maybe we'll give them some time to come in if you don't mind me taking a slight recess to wash my hands <laughs> Uh, as we have more people coming in, right now we're at uh, hearing from the public. So if there are any bargaining units that wish to speak, now is the time. I thought I may have saw one coming in. They still coming in? Okay, we'll give them a moment while Dr. Goodwin's coming up. Now it looks like we have everybody in. Uh, do we have any, rep any reps for any of our bargaining units present that would wish to speak? All right. Madam Treasurer, do we have anyone that signed up to speak this evening? Yes, we have one. Okay. You, yes, ma'am. Are you okay? Uh, Monica Golet. Monica. Monica here. Who said that name one more time, Madam Monica Golet. Do not see anyone moving. So that's it. Okay. Appreciate that. Now moving on into our recommendations. Associate Superintendent Minor, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Board President Smith. I recommend a waiver of the 48-hour rule to present the human resources recommendations listed. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Dr. Goodway? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Okay, Ms. Reinhardt is not here. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Okay. Next recommendation. Next recommendation, I recommend approval of the following superintendent's recommendation, human resources. And this is for the 48-hour waiver, or you want to put them all together? I think we just did. Let me just put the right one. All right, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. And I'll second. Second. Moved and second. Do we have any questions? I do. Dr. Goodwine. Just one question on the individuals that have the effective date of the 11th. Is there a reason why they weren't on last week's HR approvals since that was prior to our first meeting? Yeah, Dr. Jones, can you help us with that? I'll have to, uh, this one? I have to check and get back to you. I don't know for sure, uh, but it could have been uh, what we discussed last week in terms of uh, the necessary documentation, paperwork, maybe. Um, I know they're going from temps to uh, drivers, but it could be a certification as well. Maybe they just got their certification, but I'll find out for sure. Okay. Any other questions? Dr. Bailey, you had one? No. Oh, I thought you had your finger up. All right. Hold on one more second. One more second. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just to clarify, line 29 is erasing what we did last week and being replaced by line one? Correct. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Seeing none, maybe we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Next recommendation. I recommend approval of the following human resources DEA after July 10th. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Second. Mm, I'll give it to Vice President Wick this one. Dr. Bailey was slow. Okay. Dr. Gilmore. The resignation date on one of these individuals is August 2023. Has this person not been with us since August 2023? Dr. Jones, could you help us with that one? Mm -hmm. uh, that individual has not worked uh, for us since last school year. Uh, we found out from payroll uh, that they were still active in the system. However, they were not being paid, uh, but um, we put them on for resignation. Do we have more individuals in our system that are active that should not be there? Uh, it could be. Uh, however, uh, we've not run across too many. So can you just tell me, how, do, how was this one flagged? Like, what, what, was the, what came up for them to be flagged if they weren't being paid? Uh, we were just notified by payroll. I'm not sure how they found out um, exactly how but okay let me kick it to the treasurer because that's our side how was this I don't know how they found out okay yeah. 
Can we get a report on all the individuals that are still active in our system but are not currently working in our district? Yes, we could definitely put that together for you. Mr. Walker. Okay, so if they haven't, <clears throat> excuse me. So if they're on here for a date of August 20th, it's now March. So, and it says teacher, so was, so was no teaching being taking place during August to now in that person's classroom? Or was there coverage in that classroom? Oh yeah, there was coverage in the classroom. So I guess I'm curious on how was their coverage, but the teacher wasn't there. They were active in uh, the B plus system. I'm not sure uh, exactly why uh, they were not inactivated, but uh, on our master rosters, uh, we do show um, openings, if you will. So would this be a resignation or a termination? If they know, they, if they haven't showed up for nine months. So they, they resigned back then but it wasn't. Oh, boarded. okay. So they resigned and it just wasn't on the board right. for them resigning. That's what they're telling us. Okay, that's all I did. Okay. Do you, one more question. Not do a good you, one. Do you know, was there a contract approved for the 2023-2024 school year or did they leave? Because what I don't want to do is that we put somebody's license, like we jeopardize their license for a person who left way before the time, nine months later when we caught that they left. Do you know when this board action was taken on this person for this year's contract? I do not. I can get that information for you, though. And we don't necessarily have to report them to the state if that's the direction you would like to take. So if we vote no, how many times do you guys go against the boards? Like when we vote no, then we don't accept the thing that we want it to be reported to the I, state. I couldn't give you that number. Right. So does our vote give you guys the discretion on whether to report it or not? No. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? No. Ms. Wick? No. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Uh, Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? No. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? No. Okay. Four no, S3 yes. Next recommendation. I recommend the following contracts and agreements for approval. Uh, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any questions? Just one. Dr. Goodwin. Were we able to get a timeline on some of the other partners outside of Omega coming in to discuss their programs, how the partnership is working for us? Um, we will be having them come in and do presentations. Uh, and if you have any specific questions about their application process, Director Graham with state and federals here, but that is something we have planned in the future for the 21st century partners to present on their programming. Okay, thank you, that's all. Any other questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Next recommendation. I recommend approval of the following homeless education Retain and retention navigator. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any questions? Mr. Walker. I just wanted to, again, 
say that I'll be voting no only because I do not agree with this district's policy of paying people the same thing for three years consecutive in a row. Mm -hmm. Dr. Goodwin. Last week we requested several items on this one. I didn't get any emails on any of them, so are they available today on the request from last week? Um, were you requesting about like uh, standard salary for these positions? We do have that information well, that we can share. It, it was the, the actual increases that the treasurer stated was oh, okay. that piece. It was on what the cost would be if this position was a full-time position. It was the, the span of what we believe the person who holds this position would stay in. So all those. Okay, I do have information that was provided that can be emailed to everyone to provide, and it shows a comparison of these types of positions uh, and other postings and how much they're paid to compare what ours hourly wages compared to others. Ours is a slightly higher than the industry norm. For Does this it show the, <coughs> the, we were told last week that they receive a, was it 3% yearly increase? They received 3% against their uh, serves, the retirement. 3% last year, 3% this year, which makes it, when we pay to serves, 6% increase. So not on the actual wage itself? Just no, on the it's not on the actual wages. The wage will stay the same, but the take-home uh, net is increased. So they don't pay stirs. Mm -hmm. That is the, what um, the previous superintendent said. We have to have payment to stirs better than the increases. Okay. okay. I'm going to request that like we table this one because multiple statements. One, the request wasn't fulfilled from last year. Second, if we're operating on a previous administration system, I don't know if that is working of where we're trying to go. And we, we're talking about retention in the long run here. Just those two things. So I'm requesting that we table this one until those things are flushed out and resolved. Mm -hmm. Who we'll moved the motion uh, I second it. Gentlemen. Yeah. Gentlemen. So you're asking for us to withdraw the motion or to? To table into the next meeting. I mean, to the table is a motion in itself. Okay, so I need to make a motion within this motion? The, uh, yeah, so okay, I'm, I'll I mean, I'll second your motion to table, and then we okay. can Okay, so I move that. that we table this, this one specifically until the next, no later than the next business meeting to flush out. And I think when it's tabled, it has to go to the next meeting. Yeah, it has yeah. to go to the next, yeah, the next meeting. Okay, I say no later then, so. That's fine if we get it resolved by the review. That's ideal, but no later than the business meeting. Okay, we'll be sure to send the board members all the information. Mm -hmm. Did you second me? I, se I seconded it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would require a vote. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Any questions? Who motioned it? I motioned it. Okay. I, I just want to, um, for the administration, I mean, We've been talking about these type of wages since I came on in January, and um, I mean, it's past 90 days and still no update on this. And I mean, last conversation was that the budget was being done, but to me, it seems like the budget is being done with this not being considered or any of the other positions. And I think it's hard to retain employees in our district if we're going to keep paying them the same thing for three years while they're here um, and not looking at, again, the cost of living of the roads that they do. Some of the positions end up paying the same thing for, I think, 9 to 11 years as our females and males of color positions. So, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous to me, but I, that's my comments. All right. Um, question. With us having a meeting Saturday. It would have to be brought up. It would have up, to be brought with Robert's up. Robert's rules, it would have to be brought up then. It would have to be brought up Saturday to retreat through Robert's rules of orders for tabling it. Not necessarily, because we can waive our own rules at any time. 
because every table motion that we've done has not necessarily came up at the next meeting. So I mean, the, the staff needs some time to figure this out. Like, so do we want to say, so you still want to have it as no next later, business meeting? No later than us discussing this by the next business meeting. So if they come Saturday, I don't know what our, I haven't looked at the Saturday agenda yet, but I, my presumption is that there's some stuff planned for us to do with yeah, we, we didn't have any superintendent recommendations or anything like that on there for Saturday. So, nope. But this is, I mean, this is a bigger issue, like, as Board Member Walker has already stated. He's been talking about this since January, but the request has been to this administration longer than that. And if we're going to fix stuff, we got to stop passing the same things to allow them to operate, especially even, even though I know that this position would be beneficial to the director of federal programs. But if we can do something better for the position, because I want the person to stay. I just don't want a person working part time and then they leave when something else opens. And then that puts that program back in the situation of a revolving door, similar to, as he stated, with the cultural inclusion positions. When something better comes, it, how can you be mad at a person for doing what's better for their, their pockets in their life? All right. If there's no other questions, maybe we have a vote. Point of information. So we're voting to table this until the next meeting, which is no later. Business. She said no, no later, no later, no later than, than the business meeting. meeting. That would be gotcha. That would be our third meeting. Okay. Yes. Thank you. President Smith. Yes. Miss Wick. Yes. Doctor Goodwin. Yes. Doctor Bailey. Yes. Mr. Lacey. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. Mr. Nicholas. Definitely. Seven yeses. All right, your next recommendation. I recommend the approval of the following agreement, AFL-CIO Dayton Building and Construction Trades. Mm -hmm. So moved. It's been moved, you have a second. Second. It's been moved and second, any questions? Seeing none, maybe we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Next recommendation, please. I recommend approval of the following agreement. DPS UD Cooperative Agreement and mutual easement. So moved. Second. We're moving second. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, maybe we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Seven yeses. And your next recommendation. I recommend approval of the following MOU, City of Dayton, and Dayton Public Schools Athletics. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. These conclude your recommendations, Madam Associate Superintendent. Yes, it does. This does conclude. <laughs> yes, this concludes our recommendations, President Smith. You did a great job. You did a good job. <laughs> Held it down. <laughs> I'll move it over to Madam Treasurer. Your recommendations, please, ma'am. I recommend the approval of the following resolutions, accepting amounts and rates as reviewed last week. Okay. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any questions? Okay. Seeing none, may we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. 
Mr. Lacey. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. And Mr. Nicholas. Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Next recommendation, please. I recommend the approval of the following resolution, authorizing filing of original complaint against tax valuations. Uh, we have, as reviewed last week, there are several of them. Yes. So moved. It's been moved. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote. Thank you, Dr. Gilwan. President Smith. Yes. Ms. Wick. Yes. Dr. Goodwine. Yes. Dr. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Lacey. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. Mr. Nicholas. Yes. Seven yeses. Next recommendation, please, ma'am. This is the same like the other one. Um, re uh, I recommend the approval of the following resolution, authorizing the filing of original board of revision complaint. I have three on this one. So okay. moved. Second. second. Moved and second. I'll give that one to Dr. Bailey that time. Oh, Bailey? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Surprise. Okay. Any, any questions? Seeing now, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Your next recommendation, please, Mayor. I recommend the approval of the following authorizing the purchase of competitive retail electronic uh, services as reviewed last week. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any questions? Seeing no questions, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Did I say Walker? Mr. Walker. Yes. Seven yeses. Next recommendation, please, ma'am. Uh, I recommend the approval of the following agreement. Southern Ohio e EPS and IGS Energy for 2024 Master Supply Agreement as reviewed last week. Entertain a motion. So moved. I'll second that. Any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. And Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Next recommendation. I recommend the approval of the following monthly financials for uh, February 2024 as reviewed by the Finance Committee on Thursday. So moved. I'll second that. Any questions? I do have one. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, this is on exceptional children's central office. It's 91% gone. So what happens when that runs out and it's still so, some months left in school? Mostly it's encumbered, so it might take them to the end of the year. But if it's gone, we will try to subsidize it from general fund. <coughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote. 
President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Your next recommendation, please. I recommend the approval of the following minutes. Uh, they are as reviewed last week. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Next recommendation, please. I recommend the approval of the following donations for March 19, 2024. Thank you, donors. So I'm saying, huh? Is it moved? I'll second that. Any questions? Who said? Smith. Okay. Second. Dr. Goodwin. I just want to shout out both of our donors. First, the Christian Women Coalition. Appreciate them actually putting money into our McKinty Vento program. I believe last year, last year, Board Member Wick and Treasurer Braha were both recognized by this group for some of the outstanding work that they have done in their community. So it's really awesome always to see people who not only recognize different women in places and acknowledge that, but also continue to give back to us. And also shout out to Dayton Children, because it's always nice to have something here. Actually, yeah, basketballs and hoops, and those are always good. Especially I was at Rosa Parks last week, and I didn't realize that we kind of, as a district, half of the court is just open space. So we're probably going to have to look at, I think someone, we tried to put a net in there at one point, like a tennis net. But it's good to just see these type of things coming in to help what we have for recreations in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goodwin. Definitely always want to say thank you to those who donate to our district. Um, appreciate those that give back and appreciate our team here making um, some of the requests that the board has put out on making some of those donation portals easily accessible. So we want to do more of those. And like I said, thank you for donating to our district. And as the treasurer said, we'll make sure we get a thank you out to everyone who does donate. So. Any other questions? No comments? Seeing none, may we have a vote. President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. I didn't see Mr. Walker's fraternity on there this time either. Talking, but <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> you know, I was talking. You see, they looking for the sickness now. <laughs> That's how much they appear on there that y'all know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> your, next, your next recommendation, please, ma'am. I recommend the approval of purchase requisitions for this month as reviewed last week. So, so moved. moved. Second. Mm -hmm. been moved, by, moved by Ms. Wick, second by Dr. Goodwine. Um, there are some items in yellow. If you want to take a moment to look at that list, if you have any questions, please do so. See Dr. Goodwine. Yes. Can someone let us know what is incident IQ? I see it's coming out the general fund, and how is it supposed to benefit us? I don't, and whose department is it? Okay, so I'll start off by uh, saying that Incident IQ is um, a ticketing system uh, that's going to replace uh, FMX. Um, and it also has some components of uh, project management that we can really utilize uh, within the technology department 
as well as the HR department. And I'll let James speak more to that. Can I ask a question in between James coming up? So you say it's going to replace FMX. I do, from speaking to Mr. Rafer, I know that FMX is something that is very beneficial to their side of the work. So is it this is a complete replacement, or is it just taking you guys off of how the operation team use, utilizes the FMX system? So as of right now, it's not affecting the operations team. They are currently evaluating using the same tool that we are using in some IQ. It's the same tool we currently use in IT. We're just going to in the HR module, so it all integrates. All right. Got to speak into the mic, you know. Whoever does the minutes, they really appreciate that. Okay. So it's the same module, it's the same tool that we currently use in IT to do all of our ticketing, it does all of our asset management. The module they're purchasing essentially does the same thing but with HR, it does the project managing, the ticketing, it will replace their portion of FMX. We are evaluating with operations and F replacing FMX with Incident IQ, we just have not came to that decision yet. The third person that came up with you, we yeah, hope to hear from all you. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you walked up. So, uh, Matt McDowell, HR business partner. So, we don't have a ticketing system in HR. So, we don't know unless you ask someone and they can track everything they do, but everyone in every department in the district does a lot of work. And IT is one of the few areas where people have been doing ticketing for a long time. So, when you call or email or you go online to FMX, you're submitting a tickets being created and IT is has that they can process it see if it's been opened or not um, FMX has some of those components but it's very clunky and we have to pay someone to make changes to it every time we want to make a change to it uh, incident IQ has a back-end part where we can navigate that and do all the changes to ourselves the company IIQ incident IQ they uh, we've done a, a few meetings with them and uh, talked about this they're very engaging it will be very helpful as if we if you choose to go forward with this they'll be very helpful in in our onboarding of this um, back to the ticketing system itself so this this also allows for kind of a tickler reminder system so we can set different parameters on things so if there's a ticket that hasn't been opened in 24 hours it can notify a supervisor if it hasn't been you know whatever that might be it can notify a supervisor um, or you can have different followers that can be notified as well um, there's a lot of time savings here, but it increases the quality of the service that can be provided to all of the, um, all staff in the district. It has, it can increase response time, and if, God forbid, I get hit by a bus tomorrow, you know what I'm doing because it's in the system. Right now, we don't know that. We have multiple systems, Google Spreadsheets, Google Docs, um, Excel Spreadsheets, and other documents where all of the stuff and information is being stored. Um, so this allows us to track it in one place increases the quality of the service we can provide, increases um, the data and the metrics so you can see what has been done. So when you ask for a report of what's the response time, how many tickets are open, we can just generate a report very, very easily through, through IIQ. Um, I'm, on a personal note, professionally, uh, I'm excited about it. I think this is going to do a lot for the district and a lot for the staff um, because there's some days when people go on vacation if they're out of the office, they're being torn, you know, taken away they don't if someone calls in only that person that was working with them previously can really help them or that person has to repeat themselves again in order for someone to help them in that moment with this we're, we're able to go in and, and view the ticket that was created for that person and see what they've been doing and, and um, there's a lot more to it but it's going to be a lot of time savings increase the quality of, of what we're doing in the district question or did you have a, um, I'll go with Bailey first. Did you have another one, Dr. Gilmore? Not about this. I'm good. You guys have satisfied my inquiry. Right. <laughs> uh, mine too, except for one thing. So you said that uh, with the FX, they had to, if you needed something done, they had to do it. Now you guys can kind of go, go back door and do it yourselves. Is that saving us any money? Uh, so it's, when they did a module in FMX, and Tiffany can probably talk a little more on this, they would have to create that customization, and then every year we had to pay for them to maintain that customization. We don't have to do this with Incident IQ. That is all in-house. Great. Thank you. All right. My question is, once, if you were to get this system, what does that timeline look like to get it all set up and then getting staff acclimated to using it? What would that look like? 
So uh, we're, <laughs> we're using it right now on the IT side. The plan is to start training staff to implement it this summer for the ticketing system. No the hope would be to integrate them in with it and do all of it at once. No so hard. hopefully next school year, everybody's using this. Appreciate it. Any, any other questions for these three gentlemen while they're up? All right. Mr. Walker. I just was, um, not for you three. I thought you would move past them. <laughs> uh, my, my question was going back to the supplies ordered for um, the music departments that we currently have outside of these items, but the ones that have had uh, pending POs from the last few months. Any update on those? Um, <clears throat> we've uh, made several orders. I'll have to inquire with the music teachers to see what they need. Uh, our goal is to make sure all of the mu music programs are equipped with the instruments, repairs, and everything uh, before the end of the year. And so I'll have to get information from the music supervisors on who's still pending. Okay. Is that the same for the marching band uniforms? Uniforms, we do have a plan to equip all of our bands with uniforms. What we did in the fall, because I think uniforms had come up last year and somehow it didn't get approved, and we met with all of the band directors and we wanted to provide something quick. So what we could do quickly were the warm-ups, and now we're ready to bring the directors back together. We have proposals of different ones, the different styles, uh, so that we can come up with a uniform, uh, uniform, consist standard uniform for the district, but have it customized with different colors for each high school. So we want to, though, we do everything collaboratively, so we want to meet with all the directors first as a team, like we did when we ordered the warm ups, and make sure everyone's in agreement. And then we'll be bringing that to the board. Any other questions, Dr. Goodwin? It's good to hear that you guys are collaborating this year because I can tell you what happened last year. Last year, the decision, the style of the uniforms were of a core style, and they did not have the support of the band directors. So, as a collective group here, we did not vote in favor of that PO because. I mean, I think it's imperative that the band directors are involved in that because I believe all of our directors are former, former participants in marching bands. So that's really good to hear. Can we, or do you also have an update on, I heard the instruments and for the end of the year, but our programs that kind of start in the summer kind of our plan to make sure that not only they have the facility, facilities needed for their band camps, they also have the resources needed to recruit for those things since again, it's kind of in some of the down season. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely a part of our whole high school experience for kids. Yeah, we'll definitely at the April meeting, we, we have a really comprehensive whole summer programming that we'd like to present to the board so the board knows, and that will include the music programs and the band camps and things like that. So we're excited about that. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Your next recommendation, please, Madam Treasurer. I recommend. I recommend approval of the following then and now as reviewed last week. So moved. I'll second that. Any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. These conclude your recommendations, Madam Treasurer. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I will move over into new business. 
I'll kick it down to our chair of the policy committee, Dr. Goodwin. In so much as the Board of Education is committed to the continued updating of its policies, rules, regulations, manuals, and the committee which was appointed has been working towards that goal, the following are brought at this time for a second reading in compliance with the board file BFC policy, policy adoption. Now, therefore, be it resolved at the Board of Education of the Dayton City School District of Montgomery County, Ohio, hereby accepts and adopts the following policy that have been codified for inclusion in the handbook of the rules, policies, and regulations. And this is probation policy. I move that we adopt the probation policy. I'll second it. It's been moved and second. Any questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, may we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Ms. Uh, Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Moving into further new business, I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the following superintendent contract for Dr. It's David Lawrence. So moved, but it's not on here. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, my server's offline. Oh, what was I say? I mean, I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else not see it? I'm not sitting exactly at the bottom. All the way at the bottom. It's all the way at the bottom. I do have a question after we get through. I mean, it was moved. Is there something? Why isn't it displayed? Like it's a public record. Should be. Instead of uh, executive content. I would have asked, yes, Ms. Kia, could you move that to public content? Say what, ma'am? Yes, okay, thank you. Is there a reason it was in uh, executive and not like for a public to see? Oh, so we didn't tell you. I just don't want people to think that we hired a contract from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any questions? Somebody second? I'll second. Chris, motion. No. There was no second? No. No. Oh. I second. Okay. We're we moving second. Any questions? I have comments. All right. I will say, even though we're voting on it today, that please send any of your comments regarding the contract because at any of our high level people, we do want, never want the community to think that we are hiding something from you. So. I'm gonna apologize on our behalf as a board for not making that request to make it public prior to this meeting. But you can still send in and come and talk to us at any meeting. Anything else? May we have a vote? President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. All right. We'll go now to board member travel. Recommend the approval of the following board member travel expense as listed. So moved. Second. All right. Got a few questions now. I got questions. Who, All right. Who is it? I'll go down to Dr. Good one first. As, whose travel is yeah. this and what is it for? I think this is that school visit yeah. regarding so. the meeting. Yeah, it's the arts elementary school research for that and the district will be reimbursed by the Dayton Foundation. So is this for, sorry, is this for district reimbursement or is this board reimbursement? The Dayton Foundation, they're paying for it, and so we, it, I think all board travel has to go on the, for approval, but we'll be reimbursed 
um, the, the money from the trip will be reimbursed. Okay, so I will ask the treasurer, uh, I mean, with, with district staff going, then they have professional development dollars that can be reimbursed. But as far as board member travel, does this count as a reimbursement from Dayton Foundation or does this come out of our board fund? I, it depends. Uh, but most of the time, and, and it comes from our uh, funds, from the board. My thought would be that we need clarity on what that process looks like then. No, the process is from the budget, district's budget. No, I know that but, part. Uh -huh. I mean, usually it's a different set of certain, the travel is different. So that would be my. Oh, you're talking Arkansas about the right. ORC because it depends, uh, it's calculated according to the number of our students. So the budget for that one is, um, we ha let's say we have 12,000 times two, that is $24,000 for the year for travel. I guess my no, question. I get that part. Oh, go ahead. No, I guess my. How is this considered board professional development? I said it's not her trip. I, it's know. not mine. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah. It's it's um, us learning about the arts elementary schools, researching that. That's what we're doing. I, yeah, I, I get that I for it. the everyday district staff who leads the district and the art of professionals in this avenue. But I'm just. Curious on the board member. She's part of our committee, our planning committee. Okay, so my next I question how is. is how many members of the district staff are going? Three. And then she makes four. Mm -hmm. Is there any cost already for how much it'll cost? Um, I could get that. I don't. I don't have the total cost with hotel and all of that, but I can I can definitely provide that. Okay. Any other questions? You can tell you on what you was about to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> my my thought would be one. I know that this was brought up, but it hasn't been something either that the. I'm interested on in seeing what the board thought of the research needed is as well. I also think that with these funds, I would also want to see what are the available allocations that we can use them for. Like, is it a flat money that will be reimbursed because we're going on a visit somewhere? Or is it money that could go to other things, but we're then using it on a visit? So I think I would want to know that piece. Also, I would want to know where is that thought then going, because I know the thought was brought up, but there hasn't been any board initiative to say that we want to further look into creating what was discussed at the board meeting when this was discussed. So I would ask, or I would ask, who, who motioned it? Was that? It's this new business. Well, now I, you motioned it, I thought. I didn't motion. No, Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen motioned motion. it. I think I second. Walker second. Yeah, uh, Walker. Yeah. I just second this for the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I would ask that we could table it until we get further discussion okay, so on what this looks like and what the funds look like that we're talking about getting reimbursement for. Yeah, or if I, you can withdraw the motion. I'll withdraw so, my motion. Wait, right. we can't talk it. Go ahead, Walker. I think for... Uh, yeah, just for clarity, so I believe Dayton Foundation, I know this is one that I believe I still have to abstain from it if the Dayton Foundation is involved, but I think it's a $25,000 reimbursement, up to twenty-five or 30000 reimbursement. But I think I just need clarity on the legal parameters of board member going on the trip and how that goes with, well, Joe is here, but. <laughs> That's it another time. But I'll yeah. withdraw my second if we're going to table this. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's professional development or education and stuff like that. So the educational aspect of it, I mean, if you don't want it to happen, you can make it not happen. If you want it to happen, you can make it happen. You really can do both. 
But to President Smith's first question, I mean, we can just talk about it real quick, about the art school. We actually have never said it. Like, me, personally, I think the art school is a good concept, not necessarily for elementary. I think middle school is our pain point. Per, and I am interested in where you guys are going if they have anything in the middle school realm, because that is our weakest point in our system right now. It's kind of where we have the most competition. It is kind of where kids are discovering themselves a lot right now, too. And it is the <clears> hardest <throat> age because the moment you get to really know them, they're off to the next level here. So I'm interested in the art school in the aspect of middle school in that age group, not necessarily elementary, because I believe that the art should be in all the elementaries, because you have to try things to know what you not like and don't like. And they're, you're more apt to try things the younger you are, because you don't know any difference on it. So that's my opinion on the art school overarching, that if it is something that we do, I, it is my hope that we would explore it in one of our standalone middle schools at that, too. And especially when you think about the alternative to children who don't get into stivers or who don't want to do that type of arts, if they go to River's Edge, they are not going to our other middle schools. They're leaving the district. And that is a reality for us that we can all go just fact check and see what happens to the children who go to River's Edge but don't end up at stivers. They're not at EJ Brown. They're not at Wagaman. They're not at Wright Brothers. They're not at Belmont. They leave us. And probably they either go charter or they go somewhere else. And then they may come back if they get into the arts program at a later point. But that's kind of what my thoughts are on it. I don't know if you, any of you guys want to share anything. Mm -hmm. Floor is open. I, go ahead, Joe. Mr. Lacey. Well, I mean, as, as a parent of, of a child at, at Stivers, I, I sometimes wonder how Stivers... I mean, they, they need to be fed, mm -hmm. um, art students. Um, and and the, the current system, I mean, that we have now, I mean, I think it, it is struggling. Well, the, the, last, um, the last, like, uh, tryouts or audition that I went to um, and saw, I mean, they, they said, well, we, don't, we can only accept so many kids in each of these arts and I don't it didn't look like they had that many kids auditioning and in, in, in a lot of in at least a lot of them if not all of them um, so to make the the at least the, even our stivers program the most more successful I think it would be helpful to have have more arts have an an arts dedicated program in a grade school. That's, those are my thoughts. Mr. Walker? How many, how many slots are open at Stivers on a yearly basis? 150. And then, so 150 slots are open at Stivers when we have about 350 students in each middle school? So I mean, there's... Yeah, but they don't have the, they don't have the skill set, though, because where are they learning or perfecting the craft at? If we don't teach, like, you don't have violin or orchestra in any right. of our schools. So where do you learn that at? You have to have some type of private. Yeah, or we don't even have drawing, necessarily. Or we don't have theater anywhere, so. But then the, the district is open enrollment, correct? So still some of those slots go to students that have not been currently in the district as well. So then that minimizes the amount of our students who've been here that gets in those slots as well. Only 10% go. To, it's super low with external individuals who go to that school. So I, I think my, my pushback would be, um, I think the original thought was an elementary school. My pushback from that was um, all of our current schools lack music, art, theater, drama at elementary and middle school levels. Buildings are split between staff two or three days a week. Um, so if, if we're going to create one building for something like that, I think we need to be more strategic about making sure that each building gets staff five days a week with someone that's teaching the same thing so that all of our schools become feeder schools for our arts programs and what they want to do afterwards. I think if we get into the concept of Stivers is a great school. It really is. But all of our students do not want to go to Stivers. Yeah, and, and one thing we want to 
do make clear is we want to make sure there's equitable opportunities across the board and we agree about the music especially having one teacher there five days a week um, our preliminary plans are to have that for all of the elementary schools and make sure we're supporting the middle schools as well and their programming uh, we have added five after school instrumental and strings programs in the elementary so if we have just an art one elementary school dedicated to the arts similar to stivers we also want to make sure we're providing opportunities at all the schools so that's our goal which is how we thank the board uh, how we're purchasing so many interest instruments and then expanding arts opportunities but We'll definitely take all your comments into consideration as we all continue to discuss it. Can okay. I ask uh, yeah. Chief Dooley her thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yes, Chief Dooley. Everybody loves being put on the spot. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> part of the board. I'm meeting. getting used to this. An another, <laughs> another. You, you asked who else was on the committee who's traveling, who's confirmed. You know, if if as we take the trip. But Liz Whips, who works with Stivers, is also on the committee and excited about it. She started in elementary school, so that's her expertise. And she's very interested in helping us through the planning and discussion part. Uh, good evening. Apologize for my gym shoes. I was on a field trip today. Um, as far as um, arts programming at the elementary grades, I really think we need feeder schools, plural. Maybe not one, but maybe several. Um, research tells us that instruments should be in the hands of kids by the fourth grade. So when we wait until grade seven to immerse our kids in instrumental music, we've lost three years. So I think the Stivers uh, faculty uh, would very much support more arts, more intense arts, in our elementary schools. So whatever form or fashion that takes over time, it will definitely um, produce more prepared kids for middle and high school programming. I don't know if that addresses your concern. It does, thank you. You're so, welcome. Um, if we're looking at elementary, <coughs> you know we have a divide about how people already perceive how this district treats the east side schools compared to the west side schools and what like what would our process be here because I, I again if we end up with elementary we end up with elementary i'm gonna agree with chief Dooley then that it, it can't just be one because yeah. it is going to continue to keep us in that segregated mindset about the resources you get if you go to an east side school versus a west side school and that's just a barrier and a stereotype that we are trying to break down here. Yeah, and I would say also with that, even if it was one and it's on the west side, I see that creating a, a vacuum where people on the west side then go, that's the one west side elementary school I'd send my kid to. Mm. And I would fear that because I think when we have these conversations, we are best served if we look at what we've done before. Like we've had multiple art schools and be it political, be it poor, be it whatever happens community, we had these before. It was, we had multiple art schools, we had multiple feeder kind of programs. I was at EJ Brown, it was not an art school, but we had band and orchestra and handbells by the time you got to fourth grade. Yeah, and so having that across the board, it created those feeder programs to where if you were going to a Stivers in middle school and then matriculating on to Colonel White for high school. You had that kind of thing there, but over time what happened when you move these programs, Stivers got a stronger arts program, Colonel White's art program disappeared and then Colonel White disappeared. And so then you end up with, like Dr. Goodwine said, now where there is a, a conversation, a real conversation at elementary school kitchen tables and dining room tables and on the phone about what are we gonna do at middle school? That is a real conversation. So I think looking at that, I think whatever you do, it's building programs up across the district 
because you want people to also, it's not even just the building of the arts programs, because I will say as a parent of a two Stiver students that love their arts, it's not like they wake up every day saying, I'm going to go be a, a pianist after 12th grade. It's something that they also, but they love doing right now. And him loving to be in that piano magnet helps him in math. It helps him in reading. It helps him in his other classes as well. So I think even that part, that putting that instrument, putting those extracurriculars across the district is why. So I'm in agreement. I like what Ms. Dooley said of creating, I think there's multiple feeders because that is a pain point in our district also right now where parents, it's a, it's a fight to get in a school when you're then paying people to give your child voice lessons. You're paying people to do piano lessons. You're paying somebody to teach your child how to play the cello because your elementary school didn't have it. And so now you're looking at, to Mr. Walker's point about people outside the district, it becomes a have and have not sometimes. Unless you were lucky enough to have somebody put something in your hand as a young age, then your parent, then, and it's not cheap either. I just want to let y'all know, these lessons are, they're not cheap to get somebody to teach you that. So I think having those things across the board would be wise. And that is my thought of how do we do that. But I do think that thought of then what does it look like if I have art schools across the board at elementary, I have art programs, but to Board Member Walker's point and other people's conversations, everyone does not want to then go on to a Stivers. And there's many things around there, because I think you look at, there are children in our community that love arts, but they might want to play football too. And right now, if they did that, they would have to make a real choice because they can't go to Stivers and then play football. So then I think that is a real question too. How do you start looking at those things? Because that's an issue there too, where you have a person who plays that, can't do that. So I think it's some pieces there where we need to look at how do we do that and provide that to us. So. And, and just to add, I, I really, I, I love the idea. I think for me it comes back to as well the certification of the teachers that will actually teach these core pieces of the art school and how we will recruit them to the district and then retain them. Um, the district years ago when they did RIFs, the arts programs were the first ones to get cut. Um, so I just wonder if we're going to do this, that that is included in the plan of assurance of how we retain these programs longer than, well, the longevity of those. Um, I think that piece is essential, um, but I also feel that I think the West Side had one school that was closed down and then reopened and the community voiced concerns about it. And I think now to look at where this specific school may go will be another question for the community of what do we lose next? And I, I think that would be a battle there, um, but also with any other attentions next year as well of how do we bring those into the conversations with a lot of things. But I will say uh, thank you to Chief Dooley. Um, I appreciate it and really just wanted to. Can I add one more thing? Absolutely. Uh, so one other thing to think about too, um, with our marching bands that are um, coming up at Belmont and Thurgood Marshall, that's a completely different style of music than is offered at Stivers. So maybe we also need to think about diverse, diversifying what it is that we offer and where. Because Stivers is concert band, Philharmonic Orchestra, it's very classical training, which is very different from marching band. Those are different things for different kinds of kids. Um, and I do want to give a shout out to Liz Whips, who has thought about this for years. And she would love to be a part of uh, kind of rethinking and rebranding what the arts look like in Dayton Public Schools. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to invite her input. Um, I know she would just be thrilled to be included in that process. Right, she has accepted to Fantastic. be a member of the committee, so it is official. And mm -hmm. some of you may remember the Edison um, Museum. And so we're looking at the whole arts um, experience and Liz Whips was part of that. Yeah. So she's a very um, valuable asset to the team. 
we, I'm glad you mentioned marching bands. When we met with the band directors, most of the marching band directors in the fall, the number one thing they begged us to do is to expand elementary instrumental because they said the exact same thing that Chief Dooley said about getting instruments in the hands earlier, and I'm excited because on March 11th, just last a week ago, uh, we had five elementary instrumental programs perform at a black history program in the city with the strings and, and the instruments and everything. So that is expanding. Uh, and Dunbar's band, too, we want to give a shout out to My them. Bad. So uh, it's a, there's going to be a battle of bands coming up soon, and it's, it's exciting what's happening in our music program. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good one. The, the school, I am curious. Actually, I want to know what school you guys are going to look at, how the school was selected, kind of the demographics of the school, how it, the makeup around it. I mean, Houston is a larger city than what we are. Mm -hmm. uh, even their educational structure, I believe their, sixth, their middle school starts in sixth grade. Some of them start in fifth grade. Like you go through fourth and all that. Like even as we have this conversation about how to make these things kind of work in the world we're living in right now, just some information because as Board President Smith has stated, we heard about this one time. We got one email on uh, uh, planning on it, and we haven't heard anything else since that moment. And our first board retreat is this week. So that type of, like, if we're going to do this, I mean, we got to support it. The, the support has to start at this level because the same way all this work can happen and then it gets, we go, well, right, we weren't interested right. in that because we never got brought into the conversation and now we're trying to do something different with it. To bring us in again at the front end and having this type of conversation is necessary for all the steps that happen afterwards. So. We, we don't have a school identified. The ask or the request was on the west side. That's no, I meant the Houston school. Oh, I was like, y'all just going to Houston to kick it? No, that, no, we're going to Houston to visit the art school and we can give you more information about the schools. They have up to 11 or 12. Uh, but we can give you details on that as well. Yes, and with that detail, the school, if you guys have like the demographic of the neighborhoods in that mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. just things for us to like consider about those programs as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Walker. I will say I, I did a lot. Kemp has a really good music program at their elementary level with a music lab. Um, I, I, I would say like that's a, a great concept for elementary is there. Um, but that, and that's a, that's a music teacher that is split. Um, but I will, will like to just add, um, if we can look at Stivers having football, I think that's, that's always been a thing. I, Stivers had like shirts one year that said our football team is undefeated. And, I, and it questioned me because y'all don't have football, so I, like, <laughs> if I If I may answer, the last Stivers football team won the city middle school championship and myself and uh, Dr. Goodwine's cousin, Sir Lattimore, were on those teams. So pats on the back because yes, we've been undefeated since. No then. one can verify this information. <laughs> I just want to say. I'll you. send some pictures up. I'll send no some one. pictures up. They were definitely but Photoshopped. I'll send that. Um, I would to that also, say when we talk about these things, I would want us, not just in the music's piece, but utilize the, the pieces in our district that we are doing well and letting them spread their expertise throughout the district. Like do more of letting a Liz Whips go out and talk and bring ideas to the board about, hey, this is what I've seen. You know, seeing, okay, how is this, if this is going on at camp, how do we kind of replicate it? What are some of the things that are causing it to work well? What are some of the things that we had to do to get it to work here? For a moment, um, I know it was, Ruskin was kicking string instrumental, uh, instrumentalists left and right up uh, uh, across the city. So how does it, how do we look at those? So I think it would behoove us to also look at the programs, the pieces, the talent that we have in our district. And I think it also makes that person feel like they're, they're valued more as well. When someone can say, hey, yes, people want to see how am I making this work over here? And they can tell us, okay, it worked because I got these parents together. It worked because I found a grant. It worked because I had a teacher here. Um, secondly, I think just as we look at our, our, our org chart right now, um, 
we still have that position. Our last directors of our last directors in that program, I think it was Mr. Mr. Say was in that position last. Yeah, and then now it's uh, Miss Mulligan. No, no. Now Mulligan left as well, right? So it's she, two other she, ones. No, she's still Val here. Mulligan is here. And Justin McIntosh. Say's not here, but Mulligan was at the elementary level, right? And I think the and Mill McIntosh yeah. is at the high school, at the secondary. And so I think filling those positions right? and grabbing those. So what? One is retiring this year. Yeah, Mulligan. Ma that's right. Val's. So it's like, wow. how do we capture those pieces as well? So I think sometimes we can have great ideas, but then making sure we're able to support ideas. Because I think one thing that I would not want to see is us having good ideas that don't last. So I think it would behoove us to come up with these pieces. And lastly, I think Ms. Dooley said something that is very key, and not only just with music. I think that there's ways that we stifle creativity when we tell children, this is the way you do your art. Like if you say, this is the, what spoken word looks like. This is what theater looks like. This is what dance looks like. Because the dance you might see at one school, there's other children that do a whole type of separate dance. And that, those children are looking at people going on to have lucrative careers in that kind of dance. But if we stifle them at a young age and say, this is how you do it, then that is why I really I stress more increasing the number of programs across the board because then you have that creativity to say this school does more of a hip-hop dance this more is more of a ballet based dance mm. this is the spoken word in this lane i would want to see key i've had kids talk about spoken word and creative writing and say well what would it look like if our school got to do a stand-up competition as long as we kept it clean like those are pieces where i think now you're looking at the creativity of arts in a way where i'm letting somebody shine so that is all I have on that. If you look on the agenda board members, that is not an item technically. So we had some, Ms. Kidd do some research and I'll have her send it out to everybody. Since it would come from a separate entity, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Kidd, then that is not something we would have to vote on, correct? Ms. Kidd over there. She took a break, you gave such a long speech. She, she had to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm correct, She's is that correct, Ms. Garen? Right. Yeah, it's not a yes, I was not told someone else to pay for it. You all only have to spend two dollars. Our money, yeah. All right, all right. So yeah, so it's it's not something we would have to vote on that. But I do want to ask something because you know, Go we ahead. have a conversation, it's supposed to be a back and forth. Go ahead. You're giving speeches and stuff, man. <laughs> I, like, I, this I is know green. Good one ain't talking. I, it was a conversation. I do hope like my ass my ass, I don't really know your title, Miss Minor. Is it deputy or is it associate? Associate. Associate, associate Superintendent Minor would kind of be even working in conjunction with our business manager, too. Like, I, as much as we put in athletics, like, we put a good yeah. deal in athletics, but athletics is a huge part of people's experience. Our arts program should match that mm -hmm. level. I'm not saying that we should ever take away from one to take right. it down and match where we are in arts because both of those type of programs are what parents kind of kind of can mm -hmm. see their child being involved in both <laughs> athletics and arts. And if we can build up the arts program, like as he, as President Smith was talking about, when we lost the, the director and he left, we didn't fill that position, but two, I think their part-time positions were created to replace that one position but we didn't put any other support i mean we weren't asked to put other supports either but mm -hmm. putting those supports in to build up that department overarching like right now our athletics department is starting to work in the elementary realm because they're trying to build their feeders up mm -hmm. our arts department program is already sort of kind of in the elementary realm and we have one foot or a couple little small footprints in the high school and some things in the middle school but just being able to strengthen that program mm -hmm. to have have the same type of support that we're putting in athletics would probably be beneficial to us. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I just want you to know that's kind of where I am on. We should invest similar equally in that program too and not not go the opposite way of let's take from this one and then throw it over there and then now we're in another imbalanced situation. Anyone else? All right, so if we have nothing else on that item, 
My favorite time of the meeting. Mr. Nichols, what you got for me? So this one is tabled? We don't have to vote on that. We don't have to vote on that. This Saturday, uh, Saturday that passed, I was part of the 2024 Dayton Botillion. And while there, me and my fellow Bows uh, participated with our marching, our bow and mother dances, and performed in front of the um, mayor and fellow board members. Um, after that, Within an hour, somehow, I made it to my high school for our senior dinner dance. And while there, I won the award of most likely to succeed by my peers. Um, during spring break, I will be taking a trip with Central State Upward Bound to do college tours for Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama. Those will include all the HBCUs in, that, in those states. Um, my school's prom is coming up at April 20th. Um, we still haven't decided on the theme. Um, Meadowdale recently created a voter guide for the primary elections. I hope you all can go out and see it. And that's about it for me. But I do like to mention that even though our fellow DPS bands are amazing and the Battle of Bands, I know it's going to be good, there's no metal deal there. So is it really valid? <laughs> <laughs> we've been lacking a band since my freshman year, and we've been pushing for it for a long time. Get on that. I like that. I like that. I like that, Brother Nichols. You know why you will succeed, Brother Nichols? Why is that? Because you're a lion. Of course. <laughs> you're a lion, Brother Nichols. You're going to be all right. I'm proud of it. Proud of it. And before you graduate, Brother Nichols, we're going to make sure you know the lion's fight song and alma mater, all right? Of course. Do you know it yet? No. Metaldale, oh, Metaldale? Meet me after this, It's Mr. not Nichols. worth knowing, so it's okay. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get you together, Mr. Nichols. I got you. All right, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Um, so a few things for me, uh, like I said, I did get the chance to visit Kemp Elementary and really enjoy um, their third graders actually did an impromptu performance right after lunch um, of their music um, um, music showcase. And actually they have a performance tomorrow at Kemp at 2 p.m. that I will be going to as well. Um, thank you and congratulations again to the MLK, MLK speech winners, the science fair winners. Um, I will like to highlight nutrition services this week because it is restaurant week in the buildings. And so far I've heard nothing but great things about the two days of the restaurant week. It continues tomorrow with the DPS versus Skyline. And I believe Thursday is DPS versus Panda Express. And then Friday is DPS versus Chick-fil-A. So really excited for them for this week and that restaurant showcase. Uh, one kid at Dunbar I saw had three Big Macs. So he was, he was excited. Um, like Mr. Nichols said, I did happen to attend the Botillion um, Saturday where I actually got to inspect the bowls and being the 2010 bowl uh, was really something different and was really excited for the product that they had produced. Um, we we'll like to highlight athletics because it is boys' volleyball season. Please go out and support them. Um, it is something different, and seeing the guys out there trying to learn how to communicate with one another on a different level is totally different. Um, we'd like to thank the OPSI Locals 158 as being a former member from when I was an employee at Dayton Public Schools, uh, 156 Local 4, uh, 766 A and B, and 191 for coming out today. Um, and thank you for the work that you do each and every day. Thanks. Um, can I mention something? Um, when I um, brought up the, the meals that we have this week, that was my first time hearing my fellow peers say they're coming to school on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That must be a metal though thing. Y'all just y'all just take off Fridays. <laughs> okay. We got some conversations to have over with my black and gold. Oh man, Miss Spurlock, you coming with me? All right, we gotta go talk to y'all. <laughs> Mr. Lacey. The finance committee met last Thursday and, and reviewed the finances and some other reports, and they were in good order. And I'd like to wish everyone a, a, a very good uh, spring break. Thank you, Mr. Lacey. Uh, if I may. Hold on one second. Do any, anybody need to get up out of here and go vote? Y'all got only a few minutes if y'all really need to. It's only three minutes. You got three minutes. Where are you coming? Where are you headed to? Oh, I'm not, no. I don't count. <laughs> if, you're, if you're in line, they still let you get in there. Go ahead, Mr. Walker. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to echo yeah. um, the appreciation for OPC Local 627 and 643. All right. He was about, about to get fussed out, huh? Hey, she was going to get me. <laughs> Dr. Goodwine. Thank you. Couple things, policy committee is rocking and rolling. We have a lot of assignments in front of us. The IT and buildings committee actually started working on some policies to kind of tighten up our IT side of things and our processes. So that we'll be sending more over to the policy on that one. We got some good, I think we got two, two prototypes out right now that are systems that are going to help us with attendance and some other raves of things, and those are going to be piloted. One is at EJ Brown, I believe, currently, and we made the request as a committee to put one in Stivers so we can just see how the product works for us. If we get good data, then it may be something that can help overall with the tracking of attendance in our school and utilizing our badges just a little bit better, and events, I mean, a host of things. Our customer service committee, we are constantly doing a lot of trainings like every day I look up Sarita puts another one on the calendar so I believe we will hopefully get through everyone at least with the first phase before the school year is over last week board member Reiner mentioned solar eclipse glasses being donated request for because I think she said it was like 700 so my request Ms. Miner is that if, they, if we can get more solar eclipse glasses especially over to you know my people at Kemp and Fairview, but all the rest of the schools as well, so we can just make sure that when the kids are at home, that they at least have a pair of glasses to enjoy that moment. That would be great. Hey, Ms. Ms. Sheehy just said all students will have glasses. So that's great to hear that. I'm gonna check that off as that was a win, because she said that after I asked, so it counts. It counts. <laughs> The board has a retreat this Saturday, and we have things to talk about. Another school that we have been discussing for over a year is kind of our alternative school, and it is coming out of not only listening to our administrators, but just listening to different workforce, our staff, and our community about ways to really help save some of our youth's lives on some things that are coming just a little bit bigger outside of here. In April, I am hosting several listening sessions to hear from not our community, similar to how we did with the international schools, just getting that feedback, allowing people to tell us what they're looking for in this next school and kind of what they wanted to, what they're hoping that it will do to enhance us. Hopefully we'll have more information about the actual formation of it and the structure of it by the end of April. And it is, it is my goal, and I hope it is the rest of my colleagues' goal to make sure that this school, we put everything we have in here for it to be able to open in the fall and it to be able to be beneficial to our team as a whole. Let's see. I do want to give out a shout out to Fairview Elementary. If you do not follow their page on Facebook, I think they are one of the most active one of the most new, newest active pages that I get to see daily things that are happening in the school. For Black History Month, they did a host of events of, I think they took to the next level of making sure that their students got to experience not only just stories about individuals, but they also brought in, brought in people to perform and to read and all these other things. And they even did something on National SRO Day where you can tell that their SRO felt the love where they all dressed up as an SRO and just to show that support. And I mean, I think those type of moments, like 
the school our schools that don't have social media pages it does make it a little harder to see what's happening in there but the ones who do have it just seeing the joy and i mean i know that has to be a lot of work to put not only make the graphics put it up plan it and coordinate but it's some really good things that are happening throughout our district i mean kemp elementary is another one I get, I get notifications all the time about things that are happening there. And I will tell every school, I am not a person that's going on any skating trips because the way my healthcare is set up, I cannot get hurt with so many amateurs. So I will not be a part of that. But I am excited that we were able to make skating a really a good incentive that it seems that every group that's going on it, are, they're just very excited to be able to go to the ring. And we have so many courageous volunteers that are helping with that one. I got to stop through Belmont today, and I also seen they were putting on or getting ready for, I think it was at the convention center, possibly. It was like a job fest, and you just heard kids going, I got to get my resume. I got to have my resume. I mean, I'm getting in there. And it was really good to see that excitement of, I got to have everything I need because we're going somewhere, and we're going to do something that I want to be a part of. And they had a good amount of students that were prepared for that one. So all I could think was, I can't wait to go ask today, Ms. Minor now, about the youth workers program and all the jobs that we have in the district. Because if these students and scholars are looking for positions and we have them, I wanna make sure that we fill any positions that we have with our students for them to get that type of experience. Then the last part for me, so one thing that I am going to do because I am terrible at re at returning messages to people, like I'm just not good at it. It's not my strong suit and I, I understand that. And I, I want people to stop getting mad at me when I pop up at their schools and they tell me I don't respond. I am starting in April constituent days of where I will host twice a month for people to, for about a three hour span, be able to fill up 30 minutes to talk about whatever you need to talk about that's happening at DPS that you want me to hear, you want me to take back, or you want to do any of these things. I will say though, um, I'm working with Ms. Kidd to put together our schedule. I'll have both in-person and Zoom options for that time. I just want people to feel like they are able to get any FaceTime that they are asking for in reasonable time frames. But I will ask that if you do come to those things, I'm asking if you are not a part of the DPS community, meaning that you don't have a child in the district, you're not actively a volunteer, or you're not actively engaged in that way that you are a registered voter. Because again, all those things matter to be a part of this system. That's all I have, thank you. Dr. Bailey. I don't have much. <laughs> um, yeah, that was enough. Um, <laughs> I just wanna congratulate uh, Mr. Nichols um, on a Botillion. I'm a Botillion participant, 1985. Uh, when you go out to the college, yeah, 1985, that's a long time ago, wasn't it? Don't worry about it. Still look young. Um, and when you go to the colleges, ask where the alpha men are <laughs> first. That's all I got. Look at that. Dr. Goodwine, I may presume. Yeah, I have one more thing. I do want to say, like, I, I see... As coming in today, I seen the collective bargaining unions outside. I did read your signs. It is our goal too to get you guys a fair contract. And I want you to know, not only do we see you, we hear you. And I don't know how much we can do, but we are doing what we can because we want this place to, we want we want people to be to feel like they got fair deals. And we're doing what we can to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Vice President Wick. Thank you, uh, Tommy, congratulations. Thank you to the board team who continue to be engaged and uh, for all the work they do as individuals. Thanks for the team being here tonight. I think that we're all doing outstanding work and I'm so grateful. Um, I went to E.J. Brown, that's my school. I have a hard time getting any place else. Um, thanks to Omega Baptist, we have a new Reading Buddy program. And today after school we had probably 10 to 15 volunteers that showed up. We had 40 kids in the classroom for the Scholars of Hope, and uh, it was really encouraging. So I would uh, invite any of our other uh, community partners out there who are interested in some 
after school volunteer programming work, um, you know, uh, shoot me an email. I have some people at Omega I can uh, connect you with. And we have schools all around where these kids are so eager um, to have someone speak to them, have mentors one-to-one -one that um, I worked with a young lady today from our, one of our group homes and really just a lovely human that I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to connect with a little more intimately so that I can do outreach on my own. So um, yeah, I encourage all of us to get involved and be involved with these kids because they're really wonderful. And um, yeah, last month I forgot to mention that I attended with our student senate. We got to go to Miami Valley Hospital to our premier, to premier hospital to the top of the hospital to the trauma center where the kids were treated to hear Dr. Peter Ecke. Uh, speak to them um, about uh, successful um, habits of young people. There's a new book out. I know Denise and I are working on getting that book. Uh, and he was just so wonderful with the kids. And a couple of the things that he said that he shared with us, I'll leave you with, is that, um, you know, encouraging the kids to put down their technology and use it correctly. We used to memorize numbers. We don't memorize numbers anymore. We used to look at a map when we went places, and um, we don't. We plug it in our phones, and we, we wake up someplace, and we don't really know where we are without having the gift of being present. So he was really just wonderful with the kids, and they were so attentive. These student scholars asked the most beautiful questions. I'm so proud of our kids. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm proud of our board, and I'm proud of the work we're doing. So let's keep it up. Everybody have a safe spring break. Thanks so much. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Okay, this time is uh, budgetary time. We are trying to fit the expenditures uh, being paid from uh, ESSERS to our general fund. General fund is our operating fund. So it's really a uh, busy time. Uh, we don't want to increase our on our deficit, more deficit on that. The other thing is uh, we are um, doing financial training to our departments and uh, all the departments if they need help we are open anytime we can come to you or anywhere uh, uh, this time another one is um, year-end closing we are planning on year-end closing and the last one is congratulations mr nicholas <laughs> Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Mm -hmm. Associate Superintendent Miner. Thank you, uh, Board President Smith. Uh, first, I'd like to, on behalf of Dr. Lawrence, uh, thank everyone for their support. As I filled in tonight, he is in New York at the Harlem Children's Zone. So we're so excited about that. Um, we have the partnership with Omega CDC, and they have the Hope Zone, and so he's there with several superintendents throughout the nation and Jeffrey Canada learning and growing. And he also was at the Council of Great City Schools and sent us many updates. And so we'll be happy when he returns um, and appreciate his communication. Also, I wanted to uh, thank the staff, teachers, families, coaches. Math Olympics was Saturday. It was a wonderful event. It was standing room only the gym was packed at belmont high school and we had several winners so we just want to congratulate and thank the families for coming out and supporting and chief dooley shared earlier that she's in her gym shoes today and she was on a field trip well the trip was the achievement inspire to hire job fair which is with junior achievement the junior achievement inspired a higher job fair that all of the juniors across the city attended to practice resume, uh, to actually present their resumes, interviews, do pitches about their employment. They got to meet multiple uh, employers throughout the city and really put themselves out there. And uh, to answer Dr. Goodwine's question, yes, YouthWorks is heavy into the district now. There's about three uh, sessions at the high schools this week and and again they had some last week so um, 
the representative from Montgomery County is there and they're traveling from school to school meeting students at lunchtime and making sure they have opportunities to apply and we have several uh, areas in the district that we definitely want to work have our kids have that opportunity. Oh, you got me, That's all I have this evening. Thank you. You did, you did a great job today. All right. I, will, I, I spoke for three minutes too long, and then we had a passion discussion. But I tried to get us out at 730. I really tried. I did. But I want to say, first off, I appreciate everybody that did come out to the Math Olympics. There was a very, 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 very good turnout. And I think I spoke on it last week, being out there for our children when they're doing things that aren't in the athletic space. There's too many times we are, we are there and we are loud when children do the wrong things. And we should be just as loud, if not louder, when they're doing these kind of things. Um, and in seeing the children as their teams were caught up when they won, like they were so proud and like running up to get their, their medals and holding their trophies up. And I think that's the kind of thing that we want to inspire in our children is saying that we see you when you do these things as well. So I appreciate that. I want to give a thank you and a big shout out to all of the coaches that spent time to, to take that time to get those children prepared for that. Everybody at Belmont that really helped set up everything. Thank, um, giving a shout out to our people that prepare these spaces when we have events. We don't do that enough. We always talk, we talk about the events and how they go, but letting people know about the people who get the children there to get those, the setup going and those things as well. So I want to say I appreciate that. Um, board members already said, I do want to thank those that came out. I think voicing yourself is something we should do. I think too many times we look at people that voice their opinion and voice frustrations as enemies of us, or we get into these antagonistic spaces and we don't have to exist in that space. So I think that that is something that I want to lift up. Um, this is Women's History Month, so I want to say thank you to the, the, the women on our board and the people in our district and all of you because you all are part of the history of the next generation of young women that are going to be leaders. These little girls that are looking at, at you all now and the, the work you all do think we, we do ourselves a disservice if we do not lift up the efforts of people in our district and that being Women's History Month, I want to say thank you. So thank you, Graham and Densmore, and it's Denise Gum back there, and Adriana back there, and Kincaid, and Spurlock, and Dooley, and Clark, and Powell, and Sheehy, and Hewitt, and Abraha, and my favorite, my favorite. She thought I was going to skip her right there. Not you, Goins. <laughs> <laughs> you, you my favorite. Thank you. Uh, I, used to, I used to like calling her the good pastor, but now I can't call her the good pastor. She, mm -hmm. but she, she leads us. We are her flock now. Mm -hmm. So yep. appreciate the work you all do. Amit, got you another month, man. I can't got nothing <laughs> for you this month. <laughs> appreciate everybody. With that, uh, Oh! oh. <laughs> and Ms. Graham. Don't forget Ms. Graham. I got Ms. Graham first. Ms. Graham was Ms. my Graham first Ms. name. <laughs> and Ms. Winfrey back there. Don't... My father, Ms. Garen. I don't know about Ms. Kidd, though. She fussed me out. <laughs> I am so sorry. So, I don't know about that, Ms. Gail. Now I got to. I got to call somebody else my favorite now, so I'll, I don't know about it. <laughs> Blame it to my head, not my heart. <laughs> but now, pursuant to section 121.22G2 of the Ohio Revised Code, I move this board going to executive session. This meeting is being held to consider the appointment and employment of a public employee, as well as confer with an attorney involving a pending or imminent court action. So moved. Do I have a second? Well, no, that would my, I moved that one. Yeah, second. You would be my second. second. Got me off on that one. Any questions? Seeing that we have no questions, maybe we have a vote. 
President Smith? Yes. Ms. Wick? Yes. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Dr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Seven yeses. All right. Us boring folk gonna go back here. You all enjoy the last 12 minutes of sunshine. And I promise to do better next time. I promise. <laughs>